Hello, beautiful. Today we are exploring this idea of embodying your divine feminine as a way to reclaim your power. And what that means, what does it mean to embody your feminine? And as well as what does it mean to embody your sacred masculine? I know a lot of you ask me about this, about masculine and feminine energies and how to bring healing as well to both energies. So I wanted to break this video into different parts. And today I'm going to speak more broadly about embracing and embodying your sacred masculine and feminine and why this is so important in our lives. Why is it important when we are speaking about purpose and power and pleasure in our lives as well as our radiance? And if you know me and my work, my name is Jessica Angelari and most of my work is a dive into the embodiment of the divine feminine energy and all the facets of our womanhood. So we explore the womb, the yoni, and exploring our body in different ways using different healing modalities like sacred movement, like sacred touch and breathing and meditation. And I love guiding women especially into reclaiming their power through their feminine and their sensuality because it's where I, I have spent the last 10 years really exploring this energy, working on this energy consciously in order to feel safe and empowered and overall in love with the woman that I am. And then also it's how I manifested my own beautiful relationship, which I can go into in another time. So when I am speaking about the feminine and masculine energies, it's easy to associate them with gender. And when we do this, this is when it becomes very limiting as well. It really depends as well on how our bodies are built, our environment, and it depends on our preference, where we experience more joy and pleasure. And we also can move from one energy to another, depending on what we are doing. What I have seen, however, is that women are generally more at ease and in pleasure and enjoying their body and their life when they are in their feminine energy. And this is where I have seen most of the women who work with me, where they feel the happiest, where a lot of the healing happens and where they start to thrive, not only in the world, but in their relationships. This is where it all has to begin for us. This is where it begins for us when we are wanting to reclaim our power and our womanhood and he where healing occurs. And if we desire a really strong conscious union as well with another. Our feminine as women is how we become more connected to our sensuality. It's where we connect with ourself, with our body, with our wisdom, and where we can access so much of our own potential and love. When we are really diving into this work of the feminine, it's where we also embody our radiance and receptivity, which is the key to attracting a conscious man. When a woman is in her feminine energy, she makes better and more discerning decisions because she's more attuned to her body's sensations and signals, as well as her intuition. She knows her body, she knows her inner rhythms, and she lives according to her own inner rhythms, to her inner cycles. And this is what really creates, cultivates that wisdom of a woman. And where we, when we tap into our body, it's where we access our ancient mysteries of the goddess that lies within. And if you haven't already checked out my other episode that I have done about the signals of your body, listening to your sensations, make sure you check that out. I know you will love it. So when women are in their feminine energy, most women, what I have witnessed is that 
they are their happiest. They do tend to feel their happiest. They do tend to feel more at ease. It doesn't mean that this is a space where they feel more productive or where they get things done, right? But it is where we feel the more at ease if we learn how to tap into it. And this is opposite for men. Men feel more anchored and on purpose when they are in usually when they are in their masculine energy uh, and they feel they can feel more at ease in their feminine when they are exploring life in all its glory. So as you can see, even men have these different energies within them, just like we women have these masculine and feminine energies within us. Our receptive state is the most feminine state it is the feminine and we can't deny this aspect we are so used to however giving and giving and giving that we have forgotten or now we need to relearn what it means to really be in this receptive state we can learn about this receptive energy when you're looking at a flower or when you are we can look at it and learn from our own yoni our pussy, she is our biggest receptor. She receives, she takes in. So she represents our feminine form. There is nothing more feminine in her representation of the goddess than the yoni. And this is how nature has created us. There is a beauty and a magnificence in this, a magic in this that most of us are denying because we haven't felt safe to go there or we have we don't even know that it is our magic and when we learn these beautiful qualities of the feminine we start to see the masculine qualities in a man in front of us we see his qualities of providing reaching out initiating taking care all those things that make up this masculine energy because we allow him we give him space and choice to lean in and protect and we become his counterpart we we give him that energy because we are coming from that place of receptivity so the masculine and feminine energy we we can see them as this principle right so i don't want you to think of it as oh i'm i'm to this i'm not enough of that that means i'm not woman enough when I am sharing this, I'm inviting you to really come in this with an openness and don't get stuck there of, I need to have more of those feminine qualities. And then you start finding yourself, you're shaming yourself because you think you're not woman enough. You are woman. That's it. You just are. You are enough. So you have to stop saying as well that I'm not woman enough. You are enough and you are perfect. And yet there are so many spaces where we can really keep growing and expanding and tapping into this great potential of the feminine. So as I have mentioned, I love working with women and helping them reclaim their feminine power as this is where I have spent most of my life working and what I'm really devoted to. I'm really devoted to this the Magdalene lineage and the feminine lineage and exploring what all of that means and really coming home into this place in the body. This is where I tend to receive a lot of my intuitive wisdom, where I channel a lot of my programs as well and my sacred movements. And from this space of my feminine is where I tap into my sensuality, which is how I make sense of my world and and how I bring pleasure into my life. And I do that through the connection of not only my body, but my womb and my yoni as well. And this is what I love to share this wisdom with other women, because I love to see women thrive. I really do. We women are here reclaiming this magic and this power of the feminine. And it also means when we do this, we also start to invite in the sacred masculine within us. The sacred masculine cannot exist 
without the divine feminine and the divine feminine cannot exist without the sacred masculine we must embrace the two as i have been saying i don't want you to get too fixated on oh what is this feminine and this energy what is this masculine am i more of this am i more of that they are just that energy okay and they're really just these principles to help our logical mind make sense of these two opposing forces of life. Now, in my opinion, I feel like there's a lot of work that still needs to be done around this topic of the feminine, around the sacred feminine, divine feminine. And I think more, more so than ever, as well as I as the feminine, I believe, has become this pimped out notion in spiritual new age spaces so what's happening right now is that there's a lot of strong definitions put out there and expressed as the divine feminine and as a term which I believe is very pimped out this pimped out feminine it's about wearing sparkly pretty flowy dresses and she's always in this space of love and light and bliss all the time and I feel like we see this a lot in the new age spirituality scene where the divine feminine is also seen as this performative act you know, she's in this ecstatic place, moving her body perfectly, beautifully. And what's happening here is we're missing out on the unknown. We're missing out on the messiness of the feminine, the emotions of the feminine, the darkness, the connection with the womb, the work of the womb and the yoni descending down, down from the mind and into the body and connecting with the healing qualities of the earth. This is where the work of the feminine really happens. So if you desire to, whether you desire to be more feminine, or even you feel like you want to heal this aspect of your masculine, we have to work with the feminine first. And also healing these pimped out notions or coming into connection with the feminine and really connecting with the shame that sits in our body and reclaiming the feminine as everything. She is all energy, all archetypes, this creative life force. And when we come into communion with all these different facets of ourselves, we start to really come closer to who we truly are because the feminine isn't about taking on this one way or this one attitude. She is about coming back to the truest essence of who you are, exploring and coming into this deep appreciation for all the parts of you maybe that you don't particularly like or the parts of you that have been forgotten about or repressed and usually that happens or we can claim that power through our menstruation when we start to look at our sexuality, our sensuality, when we allow ourselves to be fully expressed. And that includes expressing ourselves in more edgy, wild, ugly ways. And this is how the goddess is manifested through us, through this exploration. And this is the feminine that isn't really spoken about much. And until we can really come into the, the connection with all these parts of us and stop fearing our changing ways, our intuitive ways, our wise ways, our sexual ways, our sensual ways, until we can really come into appreciation and love for where we may not feel worthy, where we may have felt shame, where we aren't using our voices, where we are holding back, we can start to bring ease into our life. We can start to create balance in our system. We can start to create that deeper love for ourselves. Because to deny one aspect of our feminine, like the wild, wise, intuitive woman who retreats, she goes inward, she listens to the wisdom of her womb that has no logic, 
But this woman knows her boundaries and she knows her worth and she knows her no and she listens to her yes and no of her yoni. She knows her own unique magical powers rather than comparing herself with other women around her or following trends all the time. This woman knows her gifts and it goes beyond intellect. All of this goes beyond intellect. It goes beyond the mind's comprehension this magic of a woman and this is where a woman really knows herself when she can really tap into this all the different aspects of her feminine and this is where a woman becomes radiant and powerful because she has moved her emotions in healthy ways and she does that through her presence with her connection with her womb and her heart and in this way she's listening to her own wisdom and not the shoulds of what others are expecting from her and needing from her and she's not getting taken away by needing validation from others and she doesn't exert her energy as a way to gain approval she just knows herself and she knows herself through the exploration and reclamation of her sexuality this life force at the root her bleeding, her fierceness through her wild expression, through her emotions, and most importantly, through tying all of this with love. And until then, we can't fully face the fierce, conscious, protective masculine who is there to support these expressions even more and to help us direct this beautiful, creative life force towards our highest self. So when we explore the feminine scenery within us, which I speak a lot about in my programs and here in this channel as well, we embrace all the different interconnected, multi-faceted energies of the feminine, light and dark, the fresh, nurturing, feminine, sweet girl, the mother, and at the same time, we don't forget about the feminine, the woman who is wild, intuitive, dark, deeply wise, deeply magical, emotional, feels a lot. She knows her body and she trusts herself. All, and this part of the feminine isn't usually what is accepted in, a, in society. This wild, unrationalized woman is usually misunderstood by society that we live in modern this modern society which honors and accepts usually logic and the parts of us that are more tamed right the good girl the good mother but when a woman starts to listen to her inner wisdom and her intuition she claims her power and this happens when she returns back to her womb and back to her yoni and her heart, the love of her heart. And then in this way, she starts to listen and trust herself. And she knows that she doesn't need logic to back up her own intuitive knowings. She just knows. And she knows that she is the greatest love. She is here to restore healing on this planet and on this earth with her love. This is what makes a woman truly magnetic. So it is important when working with the energies of the goddess, of the, or when we're speaking about the feminine, the sacred feminine, I am here to help you remember that your innate divine feminine isn't birthed through the light always. It's also through the darkness when we really claim the dark pieces of us, which is the parts of us that we tend to neglect or deny or push aside, like our sexuality or sensuality or like your intuitive knowings or the bleeding as holy or bleeding through your womb space, when we really claim all of this, we start to live a life that feels fulfilling and pleasurable because we come into this acceptance of who we are and why we are here and our gifts on this planet. 
the deeper we can go into the darkness, into the unknown mysteries of the womb and the yoni, where there is no logic, and instead there are knowings and deep resonance where your beautiful divine self speaks to you through your yoni and womb and through your body. This is how we come to know pleasure and love and acceptance and presence and bliss in ways that we may have never known before. So yes, all of my work is around reclaiming the feminine and coming into this beautiful connection with your divine self through the body, through the heart and womb. But I also integrate the sacred masculine as well. We cannot forget how the feminine is also in service of the sacred masculine, whether I'm speaking about this energy within you or in a divine union in a relationship. So yes, this work of the feminine is important, but we cannot forget and diminish the beautiful, protective, penetrative energy of the sacred masculine. For us to create our desired lifestyle that feels balanced and grounded and even to feel safe in our body, we need to cultivate a healthy relationship with the conscious masculine that lives and breathes through you. In this way, we also recognize the conscious masculine in a man. As I mentioned, when you start to really tap into your feminine energy and work with her, you start to see him in front of you. And this happens effortlessly. And here you realize the magic and the power of the feminine who is magnetic. She is radiant. So working with the sacred masculine looks like this energy of stillness. He is the container, the protector, the giver, the presence to the feminine. He becomes this beautiful container to allow the flow and the dance and the movement of the feminine, of the creative life force energy that is the feminine. And this is how we receive security, how we start to feel safe within ourselves and how we start to feel safe in a man because we understand what it means to feel safe in our body first and then that's exactly the space that we come into in a relationship from that space of knowing and worth and a deep love and respect for ourselves. So we have to support our feminine with the conscious masculine. And this is this happens in a beautiful dance and a weaving of masculine and feminine. feminine. So as I said, when we work and consciously tap into our feminine with, through our sensuality, through our body and our connection, we start to really feel this power of the masculine within us rise. We start to become more present with him. We aren't afraid to go down into the stillness and then we also learn how to attract him outside of us. We attract the conscious masculine in a man because we've learned the art of surrender and softness and receptivity and deep love and nourishment for ourselves that the feminine is always calling for us to really tap into. The true nature of the feminine is in service of the sacred masculine. They cannot exist without the other. She listens to him, she honors him, and she receives and takes him in and takes in his inner sword to protect, to provide, to direct, to be alive through this silence. Remember, this is not about gender. This is about the principles that exist within us all, men and women. So in order for us to thrive in our feminine, we have to also consciously work with this masculine who is this focus, this structure, the container, the safety, the great pure consciousness. And we can feel that through our breath, through our presence, 
through cultivating and building that inner safety within the body. And then in this way, when you build that safety within you, you know that you can explore and dive deep into the darkness of your feminine, your wild landscapes of the feminine, and really listen carefully to what she has to say. And you can do that through the chaos that is happening around you in this world. We cannot have one without the other. They both need to work together. And this is how we create the beautiful divine dance that exists within us and around us in nature and in our beautiful conscious relationship. They work together, weave together in order to create this beautiful fabric of love, which is the highest frequency and highest consciousness of all. This is how we return to spirit and to know ourselves deeper when we integrate both through our being. But it has to start with you connecting with your feminine essence sister. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll be back for more juicy, delicious talks about the feminine and healing the feminine as well as the masculine. So look out for those. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this and make sure to subscribe to my free seven day program, Erotic Feminine Embodiment, which has some lovely tools and meditative practices and dances so you can start walking this pathway of connecting with your whole self as you return to your womanhood. I also have my beautiful signature 10-week group program, Feminine Remembrance to Come Home to Yourself. So if you want to check that out, I'll drop the links below. If you loved this episode, make sure to give me a like and subscribe if you're not already so you can stay tuned to more of my delicious juicy episodes around the feminine relationships love and sensuality i will leave you there thank you so much gorgeous my name is jessica angelari bye Mwah.